Hey, welcome back. So before I start this video, I just want to apologize for kind of vanishing for almost a year now. Uh, some of you probably thought I quit YouTube or something, but I actually have been working on some very time intensive projects this year. And I simply haven't gotten around to finish the actual videos on those yet, but I can at least show you a little preview here. The bottom line is I am in fact still alive and working on new content. And until I release the next series of longer videos, I thought I would at least give you this little side project as sort of a last minute Christmas present. So let's jump into it. So you might have seen this vice on my channel before because I already made two videos about it. And while I do love this vice, there is one thing about it that turned out to be a little annoying and that's the handle. The fit inside the spindle is pretty loose so it tends to rattle around a lot and for my tastes it's also way too long which makes it feel kind of clunky and um, a long handle is good for creating lots of clamping force but the disadvantage is it's just awkward to use so this handle is not great for opening and closing the jaws quickly or often which I do a lot more than cranking it down hard so the plan is to make something that's more suitable for the work I usually do. Of course I could just replace the entire handle with a shorter one, but as you know I like to make things complicated, so I decided to build a pointlessly over-engineered handle that allows me to close the jaws very fast and still apply a decent force. And now I'm going to start to dig that part out of this slab of aluminum. Cutting these big holes was kind of a pain, because it turns out my hole saws are almost all worn out and they're not great for this kind of stuff in general, because hole saws uh, really suck at chip evacuation, but the holes don't have to be pretty for now, because we're gonna clean them up in a bit. Since I want this thing to fit tightly uh, onto my vice spindle, I did the last few cuts using boring head, so I can cut the exact diameter that I need. Next we're just going to drill some holes. These threads will serve a purpose, but all the holes I'm drilling around them are basically just there because I thought it would be more interesting to look at since I'm kind of just doing this project for fun anyway. Here's my lazy way to make a quick end stop. It's just a 1 2 3 block screwed onto a magnetic indicator base. And so now after doing some cleanup, I can find the same position again in the vise. These half slots I'm cutting are what's actually going to transmit the force from the handle to the vice spindle. Now I'm getting out the rotary table to put some round overs on the edges and also for a few other operations you're going to see in a bit. So the way I like to center this thing is to just put an adapter into the spindle that I know has a decent run out. And then I just clamp the chuck onto that so it centers itself at which point I can clamp it down on the mill table. And I find this gives me decent enough alignment for most stuff I want to do without having to get out an indicator.
You can see I switched to a roughing end mill here. These do leave a pretty ugly finish, but they can remove a lot of material in one cut. And I'm actually going to clean up the surface on the belt grinder anyway. I'm using a fairly fine belt here and also a light touch, so I'm not really removing much material, just basically removing the marks left by the end mill. Since I still had the rotary table set up, it was then very easy to put some nice clean chamfers on the bigger holes. And I'm just using a 3 fluid countersink bit for this. It might look weird since usually you only see these being used to chamfer round holes, but they actually work quite well for chamfering all kinds of edges. Here's some more purely cosmetic features. I guess these grooves could improve the grip on the handle somewhat, but I really just made them because I think it would look cool. So the handle itself is finished now, but now I'm making handles for the handle, because I'm essentially building kind of a crank. I've built a lot of these little knurled handles or knobs for various machines, and this approach here is what I figured out is the easiest and fastest way. First I put the knurling on a piece of stock. I like doing straight knurling, simply because it tends to be the easiest to make, and it's the kind where I get the most consistent results. But I actually also prefer how it looks over diamond knurling. Then I cut off the first knob and now I just need to do some drilling to create some clearance for a socket head screw that's going to fit in there. And that's basically it. I can now drop a screw in there and if you use plenty of grease this actually gives you a very smooth and consistent motion when you turn these knobs or handles and by screwing a lock nut onto the back you can set the preload on the screw so it's possible to adjust this to be completely rattle free which is what usually annoys me about the stock plastic handles on many cheaper machines that I replace with these. There's just one thing left now, which is to replace the original handle with just a little stub that is going to engage with the new crank handle. But as it turns out, I need to fix something first. Uh, the hole inside the spindle here is very deformed from probably decades of use, so it actually isn't straight or round in any way. Uh, the diameter varies wildly, so I'm going to put the whole thing on the mill and bore it out to make this all uh, actually round and straight. I'm just centering this up by eye because the hole is all over the place anyway. I started preparing this first using an end mill to save some time and then cleaned the hole up with the boring head. So 
So now we have a nice straight clean hole that's actually round. I added two more features to this part. One is the thread that will hold the pin in place. That's gonna sit in the hole and then I also cut this groove here which will accept a rubber o-ring. Uh, which sits proud of the surface just slightly and this is to create some friction to make sure the handle can't just fall off. And now all that's left is to make a little pin that fits both the new hole in the spindle and also the, the handle itself. So it goes in like this and then it can just be secured on center using a small grub screw. So here's how it works. The handle simply gets stuck on there and you can easily switch its position without any extra steps. Due to this thing being perfectly symmetrical, it's also balanced, which makes it almost act like a flywheel. And that allows you to crank it very quickly and with little effort. And this helps a lot, for example, to open the jaws really wide within only a few seconds, which is very convenient when you're holding something heavy in the other hand. For most work I do, I find that the clamping force from this is more than sufficient, but if you do really need to crank down the handle, it's also possible to just uh, switch it to one of the outside positions. Now it's obviously not balanced anymore, so it's a bit slower to use, but it gives you a lot more leverage to crank the vice down hard if necessary. Another nice thing about this is I can just easily go back to a normal vice handle at any point by simply removing the short pin and just inserting a piece of round bar with the right size, so it's not a permanent modification. And here you can see it's also not gonna come off if you bounce into it. It only comes off if you actually pull exactly from the center of the hole. So that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you with a bunch of new content next year. And also if you happen to watch this video when it comes out, uh, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year!